In this video, we'll be setting up a rate controller 2000 for multiple products. Today, we'll be using product one as NH3, product two as a liquid, and product three as a dry. First, we'll go to setup. And on this implement tab page, it'll bring up our profile name and our machine type. And we have the capabilities of changing or adding a new machine type. We can edit the machine type or remove it. Today we'll use the NHA3 tool. And for this example, we're just going to edit it. Hit accept. And on our first page here is the profile. We'll set it up. You can edit your profile name, pick your machine type, and then add your application width. And then we'll hit next. And this is just telling you the system that we have uh, one John Deere rate controller. So it's just one ECU, and we're going to do three products. A little about the configuration of a Rate Controller 2000. If you're setting one up for a pull-behind sprayer, self-propelled, or a liquid fertilizer bar, you can only use one product. But if we set these up for a NH3 or an air cart, or there's a generic option, we can have up to five products, liquid or dry. And then uh, in the pull-behind and self-propelled dry spreaders we can have up to five products we'll go ahead and hit next here and on this this is setting up our spinner rpms with our sensors for our dry and then we've got a setup application type so this is where we told it that product one is going to be nh3 product two is going to be liquid and product three is granular fertilizer so we'll start in on the setup of product one, the uh, NH3. And there's the product two. We could change application mode. And product three is the full width granular. So now we'll start up doing the section groups. So we'll tell it three sections and the granular sections will apply. And then this tells us the just gives you an example how the harnessing works that no drivers could be used use your drivers for your sections so for uh, section driver one we'll start it with one and we have six sections and then for our section group number two we're going to start it with number seven and it will only have two sections with it and then number three we'll have your section driver at number nine and we'll have two sections so a little bit behind that, that's the wiring that sends the power to your drivers. So we'll have six, and then it goes to seven. So two more sections. We start with nine. And then this is just the section groups. This is the widths in feet. So section one, two, and three, these are all just set at five. And then when we get to the liquid side we're going to have two sections and they're at 15 feet a piece to make 30 and then 9 and 10 for the dry is the same way so this is the overview of it of product one and product two and three and then we set up our pressure sensors if you're equipped with them there's quite a few different options you can turn them off or pick the one pressure sensor that you have and then we go to our alarms page so you can set a minimum pressure and a maximum, and then you can set an alarm if it goes under 12 PSI or over 250. Now we'll set up the control valves for product one. For the NH3, we'll use a standard, and then we'll have our valve response rates. That's how fast your valve opens and closes. The control dead band will be your percentage of how far it lets it get out of bounds before the control valve actually opens and closes and then you can set a delay and a control effort as well and then we'll put in our flow meter calibration and on a rate controller 2000 it is the lower number on your flow meter tag and then uh, we set up the tank capacities in gallons your current level and then low tank levels and you can turn an alarm on here as well and then we set up product one rates, your predefined rates. You can set up a rate bump. And then we can turn on rate smoothing as well. And here's our percentage of off-target rate. 
you can change this to whatever you'd like and turn your alarms on and off. And then you could have a, an alarm for your valve status as well. Now we'll set up product number two. It's kind of the same way as the NH3. You've got your valve response rates, control dead bands, delays, and control effort. And you can use standard or if your system set up with a PWM closed. Wait next. And then we'll put the flow meter calibration off your flow meter is on here as well. And we'll set the capacities. And then we'll set the rates product two here. And then here's our percentage on and off for our product number two. And on this page, we'll set up the product three tank capacities, current levels, and low tank level alarms. And then you'll set up the product rates for it as well. And we can set our off targets for product three. And then there's a setup summary. Kind of explains what all we did. And then now the setup's complete. We can go to the settings tab and change any of these if we need to. Your control valve setups for whatever product you'd like. And then you can change your flow alert, uh, calibration set up here. Change your bank tank settings. And then what you see on the display, we can change here on your main page. And then your pressure sensors. And then if you had any auxiliary functions, we can change the alarms for each product. If we don't like how we set them up the first time. And then we can change the rates as well from this page. And with that, we'll go to the totals page, which will show us the current to what's being applied for product one. We can watch product two and three as well. And then you can reset these individually. And then we have the device. This is just the lifetime acres and hours of the rate controller. Next, we'll go to the diagnostics page. And this first tab will give you the readings of a lot of the sensors and your delivery system, your section status. They'll tell you if they're open or closed. And then we'll go to tests. And on this page, we have the capabilities of doing your product calibrations. We can uh, energize the NH3 system. We can do a control valve test. We can bleed the NH3 system, calibrate pressure sensors. We can do a tank clean out on your drive. And then we've got the system summary that explains how we had it set up and the product summary as well. You can pick what product you wanted to see. We'll give you the standard valve type, your target rates, flow meter calibrations. And then we'll go to the John Deere Rate Controller 2000 main page. And from this page, we've got product one highlighted. We can tell that it has six sections. We've got the applied rate as you're going through the field. Your target rate's 120. And this tab here will turn you from auto to manual. And it will give you the plus and the minus. So you can manually adjust the rates going through the field. Turn that back to auto. This tab here is to shut product one off. If you didn't want to put the anhydrous in this area, but you wanted to run product two and product three, you still can. Turn it back on. And then that setup page what you see right here we can change these and then uh, here's your tank refill you just hit the blue for product one you can set your current levels so if you had a half tank you can put that in there and your tank capacities and we can do the same for your product two and your product three and then this is your master on and off so if your foot switch is on and off and then this little arrow up and down it would be your height switch which you are required to have a height switch with 
NH3 applications. And then here's your two sections again. They'll turn colors when you're actually, when they're turned on. And these two boxes down below are, uh, we can change them to whatever desired screen you want to keep track of. And with that, we can set up the uh, product rates. You can change these here and change your rates how you'd like in some of your other settings. And to change your rates, you would just touch what desired button you want. And with that, you should be good to go.